Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let the Super Kick Party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one and of course, you're gonna get the coffin skin. Hey, yo, 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 and away we go. Happy Saturday night to one and all here. Welcome to the AEW Collision Sidecast. I actually got it right the first time before. Let's go. I usually have a habit of uh, screwing that up as we go along here, but uh, never forget when, or remember when uh, Saturdays and Wednesdays are. And But it's always great to have you here regardless. It is always a fun time hanging out chatting a little bit of wrestling together and uh, getting ready for our last AEW show before they head over to England next week. So this should be a very fun episode. I I'm going to be a little precautious about it tonight because going over this card here, there ain't a, there ain't a whole lot on here. We got uh, FTR and the Acclaimed, which is going to be our main event. It's going to be a lot of fun. We also got uh, Britt Baker versus Harley Cameron, which, don't get me wrong, I love Harley Cameron and the improvement she's made, but, and, and Britt's just going to be walking over stuff. Hey, Jay Quick, how you doing? We got uh, Jack Perry in action tonight. We just got announced earlier uh, we're going to get Leo Rush versus Claudio, which I'm assuming is probably going to open the show. And yeah, Eddie Kingston talking about All In. Maybe, I don't know if he's actually going to be able to be in the ring because, like, he, he's he got... That injury's got to be a lot bigger than what... I'm assuming that he's going to try and gut it out. Or he's got a friend that's going to be there, one or the other. Hey, 30th Century Hope, Homer, hope you... Uh, Hope you're having a good day. Uh, secretly, he hopes, hopes Darby helps Darby win. Wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't, I wouldn't mind giving Jack Perry a new feud to work with. I got a weird feeling and just... I'm, I'm calling this right now. I don't think anybody is taking a title off the Elite until Omega gets back. And Omega's not going to be back for a while, I don't think. As I'm just about to try to get uh, AEW on my screen, which with this TSN app, it's always a question mark whether we're going to get it or not. So, probably still too early to log in about it, but no, I, it, it's going to be interesting to see what. Uh, What Eddie's got to say, I'm assuming he's got some stuff to say to uh, to the elite about everything that happened there because they're the ones that broke his leg, right? Over that New Japan Strong show uh, in that uh, Falls Count Anywhere match or right after that uh, Last Man Standing match or aka Texas Death Match with uh, Gabe Kidd there. And that's how he lost his uh, title. Lost the New Japan Strong Championship there, so forgive me if I keep staring back and forth here. I keep trying to flip it over. By the way, if anybody here is uh, looking to get all in, I mean the pay-per-view. Hey, if you want to get all in here and hit that subscribe button, hey, I'm I'm always there, you know. <laughs> I'm I'm here for a cheap plug everywhere and everywhere I can. But uh, no, if you're looking to get all in and all out over the next uh, three weeks here, the two pay-per-views, the Triller app has a deal on right now. If if you have a Roku TV, I recommend going through there or Roku Stick. Go through the Triller app on there because it's actually 30 bucks cheaper. I found if you go through the app on your phone or you go through the website, it actually charges you $99.99.
Andrew Bedell, I think. You know what? I'll, I'll be honest, Jay Quick. Every every single of these speculators, I've I basically given up on them. Sean Ross Sapp is so good at just waiting to uh, to announce stuff until it's actually there. I'll wait for him. Other than that, I really don't listen to a lot of these guys. Well, hell, the big announcement this week from AEW was the uh, Texas show coming up next year. All ends moving to Texas for one year, which makes sense. When did Eddie get hurt? It was probably, I would say, right before Forbidden Door. Yeah, because they crowned the new champion, uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure they crowned the new champion or that that was the that was Copeland's championship that happened then, but Yeah, I think it was right around Forbidden Door time. I doubt he's cleared. Yeah, I don't I see this being a big nothing burger, but have you you look at the poster for today and it just looks bad. For lack of a better term. This app is going to be the death of me here. Because technically we got 30 seconds to show time, so. Secretly him and Nigel one-on-one. Hey, I would. I would take it. Anything to get him off of. Uh. Like, take him away from the whole Danielson thing until they actually need him there. Because to me, I don't think they need him there right now, so. As I'm continually logging into this app so I can actually see what the hell's going on here. doesn't come up in a minute here i might just switch to my computer here we might be doing some fancy jockeying a position here for stuff tsn is the absolute worst some days then they're just horrible the rest of the time <sighs> there we go finally So they're doing two women, they're doing women's matches to oh, both di Dynamite and Collision. I think this might also be a, uh, this might be a statement towards Mercedes. You know, Mercedes, you could open the show. Well, I could open the show too, right? Like, I wonder what happened with, uh, I didn't get a chance to hear the whole promo speech from Soraya yesterday on Rampage. I assume that, uh, I assume she was talking about how she demands to have a match at Wembley no matter what. Well, this will be, this will be a fun time here dealing with the, all I know is she gets a title match. I went, oh, God. Well, I guess it's... I, I guess there's the way that you get away with that. Uh, you know, it is in Cardiff. That's the way you get Soraya to get her, her pop locally. Oh, Tony told her she can have a title match. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Well, yeah, it's going to be your two England girls going at it. Just going to get that last little uh, plot line out of the way for that before. Because it almost feels inevitable that Mariah is going to win the title off Tony. In terms of like uh, Mina Shirakawa getting involved and whatnot. Because no matter what's going to happen. You're still going to get. Uh, you 
you're, you're going to have Tony go down in a ball of flames. I think that's pretty much the way it is. And then you're going to just get the story of uh, retribution out of her, right? So... Oh, so we we also get the Undisputed Kingdom versus Rhodes and Guevara. So Dustin could end up being a double champ. I don't see that happening. Guevara is going to get pinned. Oh, Poochie's getting a match tonight. And the only reason I call Hologram Poochie at this point is because everybody, uh, if, if you go back to. If you go back to this, the story uh, of Poochie on The Simpsons, their goal was to make sure that, you know, anybody that shows up and they don't see Poochie, they're like, where's Poochie? Apparently, that was a lot of the talk going on about uh, Hologram and Mortos. Oh, we got Mariah Man action. Okay, so we are going to get two women's matches tonight, even though if one's going to be a squash. I don't think Guevara turns, by the way. It's too soon. And there's no real point to it, right? Like, she, he just came out as a face, right? And he wants to get away that stench of the Jericho Vortex on him, right? And that's Jericho's the words, not mine, the Vortex part, so... Somebody get a hose on Nigel. That some people swing different ways, sir. I'm not gonna get involved in that comment there too much. I guess I should <laughs> do that. Just to be intent that that was a joke. Once again, I, I think one of the most improved wrestlers this year has to be Harley Cameron. Like, we've, we've had a great roster, don't get me wrong, but in terms of just going from where they were to where they are, I while Harley might not get most improved, but I definitely say that she is up there. And there was uh, Kyle Sparks, uh, works for the OLE, put out a post at X this week and just, he couldn't understand why things just aren't hitting with Soraya. And it sort of makes sense to me that, you know, Harley really doesn't need Soraya right now. And that's not where we should be right now. Should be more to the point where, you know, Soraya is sort of the lead of the group and Harley's on the level, not above her level in a way. Soraya's just missing something. Yeah, like. I think it's the fact that she isn't in the ring enough for anybody to care. Because I think that that probably is your biggest problem there. We'll talk about that in here in a sec here about the uh, the G one, and I'm I'm really happy that that's very nice on the knee there. A little slower developing, but you know what? For Harley, I don't mind that. She's in the ring. She loses more than she... Yeah, like, wins and losses, I don't care what Road Dog says or what AEW fans say. Wins and losses honestly don't matter as much as people think they do, as long as you're willing to be remembered. Like, hell, look at Danielson right now. He's lost more than he's won. And he's getting the main event just because he got the win at the right spot. Because if you think about it, his main event record is a, a lot more losses than wins here.
All right, you can tell in a way that Brit's starting to get the uh, get the rust off here as she's going along here. So, that was sort of a. Uh, she had the glove on for the lockjaw and she never got to put it on. Mercedes actually in Texas tonight? Harley camera will only get better? Absolutely. Holy rip. Like, is it just me or is my contrast off here a little bit? We got Camille in red. We got Mercedes in red. We got Brit in red. Oh, Camille knows that. She's already dealt with the... She's going to break the stick. The kendo stick is not that hard to break, folks. Wow, Mercedes actually worked Saturday. Take no bucks. <laughs> But yeah, this sort of makes sense having th this way they could do this angle here. That way they don't have to do it on Wednesday or Saturday in uh, Cardiff. Because this is one of those matches that sells itself, right? Camille is just a beast. Referee standing there just, no, I ain't going to do much. Doing this RGT backbreaker. That's going to into the dominator. Uh, I think this match really doesn't need much more build than what it is. It's it's simmering. It's there. Everybody wants to see it. Let's just get to it. I almost wonder if uh, Mercedes is going to retain or not. That's a scary thought right now. And yeah, th this sort of makes sense. Mercedes was in Texas for the uh, the announcement of All In Texas, right? I'm actually really... I think Britt wins because she's Tony's favorite. I don't know. This is one of those matchups that honestly feels like a complete toss-up. She very well could and wouldn't be a problem there, but having that TBS title on somebody that's as well known, somebody who's well known as Mercedes out there, just showing it off to everyone. For me, that just, that speaks a lot of volumes and it does. And it doesn't surprise me that Darby's out there as part of the group of three, right? For the fact that I, I got a feeling the TNT title might be going over to Darby eventually. I don't think it goes to him next Sunday. Notice Athena out there too? Yeah, like, well, Athena's from Houston, right? So she is going to get featured on that card. Like, Tony, Tony Khan's not a stupid man. I know everybody thinks he is, but he's not a stupid man. Oh, what we got? Oh, okay. We're going to. So they're actually trying to make sense of Sammy Guevara joining up with.
I could see a massive tag coming up here for All In. Undisputed Kingdom. Hell, we could probably bring Adam Cole back. 10-man tag. Undisputed Kingdom, Dark Order. Taking on uh, the Von Erics, Dusty Rhodes, Sammy Guevara. Throw, throw a couple more random names in there. But I think with with uh, Sean Ross Sapp talking about how uh, Cole's very close to coming back with the fact that he was at TV this week, I do have a feeling he's going to show up. They still can't get the audio right. Sting's been backstage visit? Yeah, like... I think Sting has a forever pass backstage at, uh, at AEW. I, I don't think anybody's gonna kick him out of the locker room, that's for damn sure. But I also think that uh, Sting ha has a lot more respect for the wrestlers than most. Like, could you imagine... Uh, ju just throwing it out there, what if... Uh, what if you had as seeing the undisputed kingdom coming out here just threw me for a loop here what if you had a, a guy like Hogan show up like Hogan's already banned I, I could he's already banned from AEW Sorry, right now I want to give a quick shout out. I know that we're not going to be able to watch it live or anything like that, but I um, want to give a shout out to uh, Love Wrestling tonight who is doing a full show at a shopping mall here. It, the world's largest shopping, or Canada's largest shopping mall, I guess now, because the Mall of America is bigger. But they're doing a show at the uh, West Edmonton Mall Ice Palace. And the card i believe starts at about 45 minutes 45 minutes if not sooner here uh they had rob van dam down for a uh, autograph signing earlier today and now they get a now they get a card with a bunch of regular stars here so they're regular stars so what do you think we, do you think we get a title change here I find it great that we are getting the getting a title match right here. I don't think there's a chance in hell we get a tag title switch. I I do believe Tony's trying to be smart about this and not have two two titles on the same same person cuz then Dustin Dustin would have both if that was the case here. But yeah, I, I love the fact that I know there's only 1,400 people available in this for this venue, but they did sell out for tonight. WrestleTix uh, indicated that there was one ticket left in a uh, wheelchair spot for tonight's show as of noon today. Everybody read everybody else for who's. Yeah, and you saw what happened to the Bang Bang game where they held two sets of titles. Yeah, well, that was more of a bounty thing more than anything else. And, and it sort of breaks down why I'm sort of happy that we're getting uh, the Acclaim versus FTR tonight with the winner going to take on the Bucks at, in uh, Wembley. Because I don't want two three-way matches for the titles. That... That is an old Mania trope that I could not stand. Because cause Mania used to be based on if you worked, you got paid. 
So if you go back to the older manias, you'll see a lot of multi-person matches. Because if you do that, you're able to put more people on the card and more people get paid. That's where the, the origin of the WrestleMania Battle Royal happened. Is because everybody got paid if they were on the show, so then everybody wanted to be part of a Battle Royal. It's, for lack of a better term, low effort. More so for the fact that uh, they don't have a... What the hell? Thank God they started doing two nights, yeah. Now, next year, they're going to be doing SummerSlam in two nights. I got a feeling they're going to try to do all their big four in two-night spreads. So you do Rumble over two nights, you do Survivor Series over two nights, SummerSlam, and uh, WrestleMania. I don't mind it, per se, doing that. It allows more people to get highlighted, I feel. The big five. I don't know if you do money in the bank over that much. I'd love to see it, but, you know, the, bi the big difference I find is a lot of people aren't going to pay for money in the bank as much as they're going to pay for those other ones. I really wonder how much uh, Vancouver paid for uh, Survivor Series. Because it really doesn't have the same fervor as it used to be, right? With the fact that they could tout it as probably Roman's first match back. But I'm just more happy more than anything else right now. Like, we could talk about money over... <coughs> And multiple night shows all over the place here. I want to see this Germany pay-per-view. It goes, yeah, like, we got three weeks of pay-per-views in a row now. We got a week from, uh, a week from Sunday is uh, all, all in, which we'll be here for. Uh, then we got uh, the week after that is Bash in Berlin on the Saturday. It's an afternoon show, so we'll be here for Collision just as normal. And then uh, the week after that, we have All Out, which we will be here for as well. Still uh, hammering out, trying to figure out guests, trying try to figure out everything here because I still have to uh, get my get my overlay fixed up here. I'm almost done, to be honest. So, But, uh, yeah, we got three, three PLEs P slash PPVs in the next three weeks. This is our last weekend of just, uh, we get the G1 final tomorrow. So let's face it, two, four big weekends. And history is going to be made in New Japan here coming up tomorrow. We're either going to get the second ever Gaijin or foreign wrestler to win the G1. Or else we're going to get the first ever wrestler to win the uh, the G1 Climax and also the, I, I forget which it's called, the, the spring tournament that they have or the spring event in the same year in Shingo Takagi. Either way, they're going to have a sweep. New, there you go, New Japan Cup, that's right. Sorry, Andre and Melba are the two experts that I have dealing with New Japan. I'm a little slow on my New Japan New Japan talk, mainly because I'm way too busy with a whole bunch of other stuff here. As we're trying to get things put together and, you know, running two YouTube channels with uh, five different people being involved. You think Sabre Jr. wins the G1? I would love to see it. I think Zack Sabre Jr. being the face of New Japan brings it a lot more exposure, a lot more 
a lot more prominence, I think would be a good way to put it. And here's the other thing. Zack Sabre Jr. wins the, not only wins the G1, but wins the IWGP World Championship. He will have that big spot going into uh, Wrestle Dynasty there in, uh, I think it's Wrestle, Wrestle Dynasty in uh, the Tokyo Dome the next night. The crossover show with uh, AEW and CMLL. I think it turns out to be a title match. So somebody from AEW gets to be a, a challenger. And Sabre Jr. just get like the winner of the title match gets the. Gets to take on whoever AEW selects, right? I think in many ways that would make a lot of sense because you don't want to already book a match. And I know New Japan doesn't like to uh, overly book book a lot of matches when it comes to all right, we're going to book this, then we have to change it because this match happened and whatnot. Isn't it amazing how Dustin can still go the way that he does? Now, I know a lot of people say that uh, he's going to be moving over to WWE now that Cody's over there. Or let me correct myself, a lot of eight WWE fanboys do that, but... He found the Fountain of Youth. I think he stole a Fountain of Youth. I think Dustin's exactly where he wants to be right now. A place where he can train, a place where he can work. I think it's going to be a lot of, like, oh, God. Hey, Mr. Zodiac, how you doing tonight? Hit the crossroads. Oh, no way. Oh, Ben with the save. Okay, we're good here. Hope everything's going good. Oh, no, that is a Canadian destroyer. Dustin said he's happy there, but that was like... Too he's even said that even as much as a few weeks ago. And, and the fact that he gets to work with ROH and all the wrestlers there and... It feels like they're going to be doing the modified schedule with ROH like they did when they started. Oh, here we go. So Mortos is taking the place of Adam Cole. He's gotten more horny and uh, pudgy in that case, the whole group as a whole. Oh, and there's the chair. Now, here come the Vod Eriks to cause more mayhem. I think we just found our four-way for or, uh, our eight-man tag for the show. Or he is the Wardlow? Maybe. Oh, my God. Here we go. Another trio. Let's just add some more to this. <laughs> now here comes a collaboration. Uh, the Von Eriks use use the claws to finish, and they've also taught Shibata the claw. So. Shibata's new finish is the arm bar, but it's, uh, well, his old finish was the arm bar, but he uses the claw as a setup. All right, well, there goes all the mayhem. Now we're back down to two on two, hopefully.
Plus, also, this is the last night in Texas 2 Zodiac, so you never know. Hey, Ishii, go find Stokely. Uh-oh. All right, Guevara with the cutter out of nowhere. There's no way they're doing the double tags. All right, I'll shut my mouth. Wow. This won't last long. Rematch next week on on Ring of Honor. Or they do a rematch over at Wembley, one or the other. They need some stuff to go on the shows, so on the pre-show, so that could very well go there. There we go. But now the Indisputed Kingdom has nothing. I guess they want to do that Texans get all the titles before they leave Texas kind of deal here. Adam Cole won't be happy. Of course he won't. I honestly feel like for everything that's been going on, I do feel that we might get Adam Cole at Wembley. Here, here's my crazy booking. This, this could change by next Sunday. Hangman Page wins the uh, wins the gauntlet, forces the title match that night, ends up costing Swerve the title while Danielson wins. That sets up Swerve versus uh, Hangman in Chicago and lets Danielson do whatever he's got to do on his end. So, oh, Kingdom, you got some explain to do. Tony Khan is not hiding his uh, affliction for uh, using popular music. So his tribute video to Brian Danielson was Tommy Your Life. Now they're using Machine Head for the title match. Are you going to blame for that kingdom? You can't blame Wardlow. Oh, Wardlow was not out there. So, yes, they can. Paul White was the guy that gave Brad Danielson his first title. So, before all that. Uh, I love that Dax couldn't put down the tequila without getting on screen. Oh, of course, Nigel's going to go with Swerve. Yeah, I, I totally love how TK is just, you know, here's a couple thousand for, uh, for Machine Head, Tommy Your Life. He's making the main event sound like a big, big deal, right? Danielson also took the pure title from Nigel. Hey, Nigel is about as bitter as they come when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, dealing with Danielson, right? And his, his forward past and whatnot. I know a lot of people can't stand old school, uh, the old school way that Nigel acts. I think Nigel does an absolutely fantastic job of towing the line right to the edge 
without really going over it a whole lot. And the times that he does go over it, it's completely hilarious. And no, everybody pretty much considers it a joke. Like the whole vegetarian joke. You guys heard that one, right? The, uh, you know, Brad Danielson claims to be, uh, be a vegan, but yeah, he eats breed all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'll just. I think that one deserves that. Not a full time, but you know. But yeah, for those that I wish I had the graphic up for tonight, I'll, I got to work on it here. Uh, it'll be ready for Wednesday here. We're going to have. Uh, so right now we're going to have. Ca Ca <coughs> so during the entire six hours. We're going to have Kayla J, McGee, Zodiac and myself currently. Uh I was going to ask Andre C, but right now he is at that Love Wrestling show that I described. So uh, we're going to have to see if I want to see maybe if he wants to pop on as well as be part of the group here. Everybody who's been on in the first year here of doing these with uh, with guests. So can only imagine what he'll say when Mariah comes up. Well, all I know is he's got to use a lot of this and this and maybe some more of as long as, as long as they got the sensor button ready to go, we'll, we'll be okay. So we've had two pretty good matches and we're only half hour in. And they've only advertised four. We had one advertised, one unadvertised. So this could be an interesting night, depending on what they're, they might give a claimed an FTR. They might give them an hour. Really wouldn't blame them. What the hell is that? Ooh. My eyes just per my eyes just perked up. Did you hear that? So you get an hour in Nemeth, Josh Alexander at the TNA special into the month. Yeah. Hey guys. Hey guys. Can Mox just show up and hit Jericho for wearing that jacket? Well, you know, sometimes people need highlighters, right? Or is Zodiac, I think, called a big bird, if I do remember. Is it, was it you, Jay Quick, or was it Zodiac that called a big bird last, on uh, Wednesday? Okay, Jay Quick, sorry, I'll give you the credit where it deserved. Even what the now I know why we got two batches of the first half hour. Renee's trying her best not to crack up laughing right now. All 
right, Jericho. Jericho's even mocking the jacket. Oh, here we go. Holograms back up. Renee's like Claudio. Yeah, I give her that. But honestly, the modern day Stu Hart. You're not allowed to call yourself a modern day Stu Hart unless you do the lisp. I find it interesting that they do not give any promo time to hologram, which might actually be a good thing. Not in the fact that I don't know if he speaks English. No, th this will be a lot of fun here. Just getting a chance to see a little bit of hologram. Keep him on collision. Just let him run. Hire Fudaki to trans. Would that work? It's supposed to be a luchador. I was going to say, maybe hire Rey Mysterio once he retires. But the fact they're giving him an helicopter, like, in his singles matches, he's basically getting people that he's worked with numerous times already. Because Angelico's done a lot of work in AAA, which, which we see uh, a lot of people. Just don't hire Sin Cara, he'll miss the arena. <laughs> I'll give you that one. But it, it, it's so nice to see, you know, Tony knows how to build up guys. And just putting it all together into a decent show is just seems like it seems like to be a headache once in a while as it happens here. So and the fact we won't see him for a week and a half, probably or two weeks. Because I got a feeling that Helico's not going to be making it to, uh, or sorry, not an Helico, uh, Hologram's going to be heading over to Collision. Next Saturday's show, I, th I honestly feel that there is a high possibility that our PLE after the show might be more exciting than the actual show. More than Collision. For the mere fact of that is the night before, it's pre-taped. So they're, don't get me wrong, the matches will be great. Just like I said about tonight, we're going to get some good matches. We've had two good ones so far. Like Harley Cameron showed up and put on a hell of an effort against Britt Baker, eventually losing to her as they're getting ready for that uh, TBS title match. And then you got the tag title match, which... Had your usual chaos that you're dealing with. I wish I was that loose and fancy free like like Ed Helico. I, he's got muscles there that are more relaxed than, you know, than I'll ever have. That's for damn sure. I used to, hey, I used to be, then I, then I turned five. But yeah, I, it, it's going to be interesting what happens when we go back to the road again. I also wonder what's going to happen with the uh, big deals that are going to be coming down here. I used to be that I heard of buffets. I, I will join you on that one, sir. I actually, oh, I got, I lied. I actually came out at 12 pounds. My mom did not like me at birth, so just imagine giving birth to a turkey. 
And I'm talking about Thanksgiving turkey. And I'm talking about those U.S. Thanksgiving turkeys. Not the small ones we have here, because Thanksgiving doesn't mean as much up here as it does down in the States. So yeah, we got Jack Perry, we got Mariah May. Gonna, our second hour is going to be full of squashes for a lot of it, so... We got Eddie's announcement, and uh, with all due respect, when they talk about, like, different announcements for different people, I think of what happened on Wednesday when they were hyping up how uh, Claudio and uh, Okada were going to have this big one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, it was a backstage save with the last of a minute. So... I'm not counting anything when they say they're going to hear from X and Y. I can see at Helico did learn about the hard cabs, so they got to use the, the side cabs here. Oh. Yo, a helico hard cam. Well, it depends. Does he want his rear edge showing the whole time? Sometimes that's the case when it comes to me. No, 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 please, no. I will cheers to that with a sugar-free Red Bull. But yeah, this is uh, just watching that Hulk of take control here. He, he's usually the guy that stays on the ground that does a lot of work. So this actually makes a lot of sense, this matchup. Look, man, some of us told us we have a nice ass. If he's, if he's happy with ass shots, well, I guess... Guess I'm happy for him. All right. Some people, you know, their ass is magic. But. And with all due respect, I don't want to include your wife. In, include in any statements, wife, girlfriend, significant other say they have a nice ass. Because that's almost a default statement. Ass magic. That seems to be a certain website you could use for that one. It's sort of like the nightmare that we talked about. We were talking about Wednesday about uh, Sonya's new uh, faction name. PCF, I think it was just like, that. Yeah, like, just bring it back memories there. But we need to remember there's daddy's a daddy ass. Very good point there. I'll give you I'll give you a jam coin for that. I'm sure it's filled with Penetrate commentary. <laughs> wow, Zodiac, you're on today. I am looking forward to next Sunday. That is going to be a lot of fun. Because I know there's different parts of the show. Like, th the funniest part about the whole thing is we're all watching at different times, right? Because we're not watching on the same feed. I might actually be able to find a way to to fix that though but might not be able to figure that out in time though so we'll just leave it at that right now but just watching people I, I think it's a lot of fun when somebody knows something's coming somebody doesn't want to say something and it's all around there next Sunday's going to be so much fun it's either going to be good Great chaos, or it's just going to be absolutely spectacular, one or the other. And the best part is we get to start with coffee. Because in Alberta time, the pre-show starts at 9 a.m. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Referee death spot here. 
Four consecutive roll-ups. Missed the stomp. Roll up. Reversal. <coughs> Have we seen a fish finisher from Hologram yet? Or has he just been like uh, Xavier Woods and just have sneaky pin? Nice reversal. Oh God. There it is. He is Mr. Sneaky Pin. Hologram is just simply Mr. Sneaky Pin. Like it's bad enough. Like Woods is now calling his small package. He is now calling it Lost in the Woods. Because it wins so many matches for him, he calls he might as well call it a finisher at this point. But yeah, I just want they're using hologram right right now. Giving us some really credible wins against some decent guys like That's not an entendre, I'm sure. Yeah, well. It's not a three-way pin, so it doesn't really count for that. <laughs> no, I just... I, I'm happy that so many wrestlers are getting the opportunity to get on TV the way they are. And the fact that, you know, as much as people say nothing's going on... That's a page out of history. <laughs> yeah, when she was relevant. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier in the show. I don't know if you... Oh, yeah, Jay... Sorry, Jay Quick. That's you. Yeah, the, we were talking about when she was relevant. But now he says that he's going to do it after they almost did it to, uh, almost did it to Kyle Fletcher there, that one. And then he did it to Michael, MJF did it to Michael Oku, almost did it to Amira at uh, Rev Pro last Sunday. Oh my God, we got a leap member on collision. Um, We have an elite sighting. What's the difference between all the Tiger drivers? 91, 98. I'd have to look into it, but from what I've seen, and this is just me as a commentator looking at these moves as they're going around. Um... What the hell is that? From DallasSingles.com? Did somebody lose a bet they had to have that listed? Anyway, back to your question here. What I find is, uh, and this is, you know, just for me seeing it, I'd have to look it up. I'd actually have to find the... What other guys say? I know Pete Dunn uses the 98. Uses 98. Tyler Bate uses 97. I think it has more to do with the different versions of it and how much you're actually leveling out your opponent. Like if you look at the Tiger Driver 98, 
it's basically a flip out uh, double underhook power bomb. Well, you could send Danny Orion back to DallasSingles.com if he has a single brain cell left. It's a Busaiko knee. It's the one that Danielson does. He stole it from him. See, 91 basically is put straight down the guy's head. 97. I forgot he was a champ too because he doesn't fight. I know uh, they were talking about the Bucks and their the ability that they haven't been defending the titles basically ever. Essentially, the Bucks have the Lesnar contract is what... Uh, is what uh, Sean Ross Sapp's reporting is they have that rare contract where you don't have to you don't have to uh, go every day, right? They only have X number of dates that they have to work. Oh, body bag. Great. Plus, it's probably the contract that one of the elite needs to be there since it won't be the Bucks. Maybe. At least he's only doing half the face, right? I prefer the funnier one, not the funny looking one. Yeah, fair enough. I'd love to see Okada here every Saturday. Whoa. Are we doing another custom title? TK's forking out the money for some titles. That's That actually looks pretty damn cool if you ask me. That it looks like a toy. I, I'll be the first to say it. It looks like a custom toy. He wants you to forget where he's a champ too. Yay, we all agree. I really agree with you, Zodiac. I, I I honestly think Darby wins on Sunday. I, I I almost feel like they shouldn't. I think the winners of the tag title match, as well as uh, the TNT match, will tell you a lot about the condition of Kenny Omega. Because if Omega is close to returning, I don't think anybody from the Elite loses a title. I think you literally have everybody there in the elite having a title and Omega's there to rip them off all of them. He may not do it all himself, but he'll have help. But he'll be the one leading the forces going after him. If Omega's going to be a while, which apparently Michael Nakazawa did say that it is going to be a while for him because they literally ripped 25, or 25 centimeters of his colon out, so five inches. No, the W8 inches. Sorry, my apologies. I forgot my 2.54 centimeters to an inch deal. Uh, you're looking at a lot of repair. And right now, apparently, he's just starting to work out right now. So, but of course, this is wrestlers talking. We could be anywhere all over the place here with this. So, there is a possibility we could be. We could be looking at 
pretty much anything at this point in terms of that. And, but I, I do think Kenny Omega is going to be the one to break up the... Uh, Holy crap, the Elks are running away with it. Running away with a game tonight. That's not... <laughs> that, that's amazing. You get a new owner and you actually look like a team. But, uh, yeah, it feels like... Uh, it, it feels like Omega's the one who's supposed to break him up, but if they're... If, if the fact that they're... Omega's going to be a while to get back, I think they lose the title sooner than later. Bucks still don't get their win at Wembley. Now, here's a question for a chat. Do we get the worst ending of all here tonight? A double DQ finish in the main, so then we end up having with the three-way at Wembley? Or do we get an actual winner here? Because I think we're going to get a three-way in the trios. Mainly because they haven't said anything about it yet. So. I would assume we're going to get just a one-on-one -on -one match here. So both title matches aren't three ways. But we could get both. Well, who knows? As we are just finished the one hour mock. Once again, everybody, thank you for stopping by here. Ready Channel Live with the channel VOD, with the channel on the YouTube. YouTube's on fire lately, so. I want to see how this new overlay handles what gets handled on my computer, and then I might actually do uh, some co streaming over on YouTube for, uh, for some of our sidecasts, just so we get a little more traction over here, a little more talk. Oh, so they're going through the whole story, but are they? So we might actually get it, get an answer about what's going on. I also think the House of Black is going to end up with the titles by the end of All In. Because if... Uh, Hellacious Hellcat. Switchblade comes back and the Bad Bad Gang gets back, baby. I, th I honestly feel. Oh, here we go.
What? We're getting a 12 man ladder match. Uh, can anybody say chaos here? We are getting a 12 man ladder match. Hell, for all we know, it could be a nine-man, three-woman. We'll see, but... Saturday, we're getting the, uh, the, the qualifier. Wednesday, we're getting Okada and Castagnoli just to start up. That, that, that's enough of a main, main event for uh, Dynamite next week. Really makes you wonder who our fourth team's going to be. Could that be uh, Claudio Mox Yuta? Could you see the BCC be just putting themselves together as that fourth team? Could you imagine those three in an age of chaos match like that? This just seems like a weird, weird match to put on. The DMV. Anybody got to get their license renewed? I do love the uh, Top Flight's new outfits and the new... Uh, just settling into the gimmick. No flight attendant tonight. We don't get no Layla Gray at ringside, which, you know. But yeah, this will be a fun match. I don't know, particularly long match. Because we still got the Mariah May segment. We still got uh, Eddie Kingston. We still got... Love it when the wrestlers lean to the gimmick. More cheese is good cheese. Well, the other thing I'm thinking about that Zodiac, and I, I do listen to the AEW Unrestricted podcast. Uh, it's Aubrey and uh, Will Washington. They're doing their interviews with all the people that are th at AEW, and... Actually, today I was just starting this week's and uh, this week's interview is actually with Jennifer Pepperman from uh, from the writing department. Like she, t like I've only gotten into the part about Mercedes and how uh, how she came in from getting Emmy awards doing soap operas into coming into working for WWE for almost 10 years before coming over to AEW. Nice stunner. But I think Peppermint has a lot to do with like people leaning into their characters a lot more and letting Tony do such a thing, right? And I wonder if we're going to see a little bit more of that going forward. Like, in a way, top flight, getting into that gimmick is, like you said, good cheese. It's a bit of a cheesy idea, but it's not going overboard. It's nothing overly unrealistic, right? This crowd just loves a love of Claudio. But I don't know if they really got any opinion on this match for the most part. I don't know. We've been talking about this before. I know Zodiac, you brought it up plenty of times here. 
the way that AEW mics their rings is really it's really hard to get a feel for the crowd. The head to BCC. Nice try, Nigel. Nigel's really starting to fight for it here. Oh, God. Oh. Claudio gained, then lost, then... So, Claudio's not perfect either. We can say that. The only problem is when he fucks up, he, he gets really into it a lot more. Yeah, I'd like to see who these wildcard teams are going to... I just thought of something, guys. Let me just throw something out there for you. Throw, throw a little bait and, uh, you know, reel it in here. How about the Hurt Syndicate, which has recently been trademarked by the same company that trademarked MVP's music when he was in New, New Japan. Could that be the introduction we get? I know it'll suck because it's on, colli on, on Collision and we'll already hear about it, but... Would we want to throw something out on a tape collision? Probably not, but at the same time... Having a great spot is having a great spot regardless. I love Leo for that. Oh, I love this crowd. Oh, what the hell? Let's do it again. See... Now, if Claudio was smart, he would try to go for 100. Like, if you're going to do the airplane spin on somebody, this might be the guy to do it on. Or do the, uh, the, the big spin. Sorry, not the airplane spin. But it's also, if you think about it realistically, the way... <laughs> Claudio is having such a fun time. But if you look at realistically, that is probably one of the easiest moves to take if you're a wrestler, right? Because all you're doing is going around in a circle and just landing on the mat. Oh, trying to do a Poison Rana. Oh. Look like he was trying to go over the gotch pile driver, possibly. Nice wheel kick. I think it's more of a scorpion kick than a, than a Pele kick, but... Aw, look, he's hugging his dad. <laughs> All right, that's a nice reversal there. All right, Leo, what do you got? Right into the front row. 
I thought he was going to jump right on top of the cameraman. Leo looks dead. All, all this flipping and dipping and pipping and mipping here. Nine point eight seven. Atta boy, Leo. And they switched the wrong camera. What a shock. As the guy's trying to run back into the ring, you pull, 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 pull. Setting up with these huge uppercuts here, like. I would love to see Claudio get a title on the main roster. Like, like realistically, we're getting to that time of year where being the Continental Cup champion does not matter a whole lot. As long as you're one of the 12 that's going to be in the tournament. If that was 2K24 and you're my GM mode, Leo would have lost to my count. Yeah, probably. And I would have been thankful because it would only have been a two-star match. <laughs> Which by... Oh, God. He's done. Jesus. Thank you for the cheap plug there, by the way. For anybody that's uh, coming late... After we're done collision here tonight, there'll be about a five minute break and then we will switch over to WWE 2K24 for week 13 of our GM mode in season two. Oh, goody. Please let this. What the? Okay. Ah. Uh, number one, kudos to Statlander because I think the theme of the night tonight is trying to break break each other on the mic. Jericho almost did it. Now Stokely almost did it to to Chris there. Number two, they are finding very smart ways to book all out without really interfering with the booking of all in. Right now, they did that promo with Pac that said, I got winner of MJF and Osprey in Chicago, which how ironic would it be to have, pa to have Pac versus Osprey in Chicago instead of Wembley? Mm. Or you could have Pac versus MJF in uh, Chicago, and I think that might be the most cheered that Pac would be in a stretch for a very long time that just wasn't reflective of his uh, abilities in the ring. Like there is no cheap heat needed for MJF in uh, in uh, when in uh, Chicago at all, but no, even right here they just announced that they're gonna do Statlander versus Willow in Chicago, with a stipulation picked by the winner here. So I'd almost like to see Willow win, 
just so they could put Stokely to cage hanging above the ring? Or you know what? No, no. One better. One better. Let's stick Stokely up on a pole, fasten a harness to him, like put a belt on him and just have him hanging there. So it's a custody of Stokely match. If you didn't hear, that's a, that was the original plan for what they were going to do with Dominic in the custody of Dominic match. Uh, that was another part of that impulsive interview that uh, came out. So The only thing we're missing out of these Stokely promos to me is like the, the stereotypical Rocky training session. But I also like that Statlander is showing her comedic side at the same time being that shit heel that she needs to be. Because I don't think Statlander, like, I'd like to see what Statlander's like as a true, true angry heel. But I think this more suits her for what, uh, what she is in terms of a heel. Just that smarmy comedic heel kind of thing. All right, we come back from this. I think we're going to get Mariah May here in a nothing match or else we're going to get. Uh... Oh, here's your Eddie segment. Like I said. Ooh. Okay. Okay. With all due respect, I didn't, ex like I said, after last week with the Okada and uh, Claudio face off, it's all I expected. Wielding the shoe, willing the Owen Hart title. Don't even get an intro. To hell with you. Well, I guess this this local competitor should have walked out for his shoe too. Nobody rang a bell. That was quick. Oh, they rung the bell. Well, I guess they rung the bell again. Well, that's how you get your second women's match on tonight. I could see Mariah winning it more for the fact that she shows up here. Oh. My final gift.
Okay. Okay. And Mariah's still like... Oh God. Well, they were looking for an extra who would bleed. Is there any other result than Mariah winning? It has to end that. I think it has to. Here's the other reason why I think it should. And it's simple that Mariah's working Saturdays, right? You need to have your, some regular titles here every Saturday. And I think having the AEW women's title here while the TBS one stays on Wednesdays might actually make a lot of sense. And who knows, with the announcements that are coming down the block here, these could be like, you could be moving Saturday somewhere. Who knows? Be a hell of a story if they could here, so. Um, but, uh, all right, so. They just said that we're getting our main event here just after the break here. So let me uh, let me throw this up here just as part of our tradition here as we go along so I don't get caught this time. Uh, we usually let you guys know what's going to be happening here as part of the uh, stream going on going forward here. So tomorrow night I'll be here with the Backbreaker Fight Club. I pretty much cleaned everything up last night. Then If you were here last night, we were supposed to be in there, but... Apparently some donkeys got in there and trashed the place, so had to clean her up. We were doing a little Fortnite last night with the new uh, the new season going up there. Tomorrow night we'll be in here with the Fight Club, probably doing some Tekken 8 arcade runs, just to see how those stories run maybe, maybe do some online. Might do Guilty Gear Strive, we'll see how things go. Hell, we could end up in Street Fighter for all I know. I, I'm still not 100% confident, but looking like we're going to go sort of towards Tekken 8 because I need to get some more arcade runs available for the YouTube channel. So might be where we end up on that. Uh, no stream Monday. Possible stream on Tuesday. That's a wild card. Next Wednesday, we will be here for AEW Dynamite and week 14 of WWE 2K24. And then uh, Thursday, we'll be here with Tears of the Kingdom. I think we might be ready. I, I got to look, but I think, we're, I think we're ready. As we're getting ready for that descent into, into Ganondorf. We might do the first half, and then we come back and just uh, fill up with everything that we need to fill up with. Renew our supplies, as it will. Anyway, I do feel like we should finally get into our descent into hell. We're, we're getting close enough here. We loaded up a little uh, treasures and whatnot. No, anyway, no stream Friday. Next Saturday, we'll be here with AEW Collision, followed by the Fastlane PLE as part of 2K24 My GM mode. All leading to next Sunday, all in London. Probably going to start around 11.30 Eastern, 9.30 Mountain. My guests will show up when they show up. I'm not putting any pressure because they're going to be an early morning. So, well, it's earlier for me. I'm going to have the pot of coffee on and 
yeah, just basically after I throw breakfast, I got to throw up the uh, stream here. So I'm uh, going to be joined by McG, Zodiac, and Kayla J are confirmed so far. We might have more. Twitch allows you four guests, I do believe, so. You notice the color change? You notice how the uh, new jersey is uh, half blue, half pink, half black? And the fact they're doing their promo there instead of on the way down to the ring. Oh, this is going to be fun. They're giving him a full half hour here, so we're, we're just going to be able to sit back and relax and enjoy some great wrestling. Like, to be per perfectly honest here, I think three of the four of these wrestlers here are absolutely fantastic. And Caster just seems to fit in real well with uh, Bowens, so... I love to see the story that they're going to tell in this one. And all black tights. I love it. You stupid piece of garbage machine. <sighs> of course, the acclaim come out and I end up. Once again, it goes right back to my main screen. I got to find out why. Now, if there's anything about karma here, we should, the acclaim should win. Like if it's just straight karma right now. Love watching some of the old regulars on uh, a quick uh, X read or X skim there for a moment. They, uh, the big comment is, oh, no, no use trying to get better in ROH. They're just going to give it to the old guys. I got a weird feeling based on what's happened. Give me a little bit of time to run through that. There might be a reason why Dustin and Sammy won the titles. And I think it might be the fact that the Undisputed Kingdom are not going to be on uh, ROH a whole lot anymore. I, I totally feel that the landscape is going to change starting next Sunday on a lot of things. Just Tony is just grinning way too hard about all these announcements coming. 
And the fact that he hit that home run announcement already this week. Like, maybe it's just me, but I don't even think that there might... That the TV deal might not be... Might not be the ultimate deal. This crowd is all over the acclaimed here. Yeah, it's going to be such an insane show next weekend. Like, I'm just so happy that I booked time off for it. <laughs> oh, Nigel, God bless you some days. Caster trying to get some work in. I like it. But yes, yeah, settle in, folks. We got 20 minutes of this to come up here, so. Well, FTR is turning into the heels. I like that a little bit. Almost makes me wonder, like, it, it makes you wonder if, you know, Cash actually might even have problems getting over the border regardless of his expungement of his convictions. All right, here we go as we're going in here. But I'm looking over the landscape of everything that's been going on over the last few weeks here, like there, there's been a lot of talk about dissension among the ranks and a whole, whole bunch of haterade going out everywhere. And it almost seems like it's hilarious how we think the pay-per-view cycle goes in terms of the comments about AEW. And to the fact where everybody's starting to get ahead of it now. Like, it's hilarious when you're coming up Wednesday and they're like, okay, what's the controversy coming up for the pay-per-view now? And obviously, it, I, I think the biggest one right now is the Brit MJF one, right? There hasn't been anything a lot bigger than that right now. And it seems like that's been squashed pretty good for the most part. Just comes up as two people that just don't like each other. It isn't like we haven't seen that happen ever. Block the atomic drop. I always appreciate the stand up off the atomic drop. Now we're taking it nice and slow. But yeah, once again, we're just, you know, they're cruising through these last 20 minutes here. Like, we, we still got 20, 23 minutes to the end of the show. Could you imagine them cutting it off or, like, winning this in 10 minutes and then they got to fill for the last 15? But you know, as much as I said this show would be a bit of a, a snoozer and between everything that's gone on, it almost feels like it has been a little bit. You could still say this is a great match to end your, uh, your internship in Arlington. Cash, why would you grab his tights? He doesn't know you're coming.
Wow, Cash is really showing off the guns. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. But no, I, I don't know how to feel about this Acclaim team. Like, I, I think they they should, in a way, go straight over a heel, but... That is going to be a fun match. The, the, Wednesday's going to be fun. That British crowd's going to bring a lot of energy to it. O Okada and Castagnoli. You got Billington who's going to blow the roof off that place against Jericho. It's probably one of the few times where we don't think Jericho's going to be the popcorn match. I really do hope that uh, Jericho gives the win to Billington there, but. So once again, uh, if you if you are looking to get the all in and all out pay-per-views and you're willing to watch both, I do recommend if you do have a Roku device, go through it. Uh, because there is a discount deal on the Triller app through your Roku. As we were talking about it, the uh, it it seems like I get different numbers based whether I go through the website, I go through my phone app, or I go through my uh, my uh, TV. So I own a Roku TV, so just makes things simple for me. No, I, I do like how things have settled in a little bit more here and a little more defined. FTR just so good at heels, too. It, it's been such a long time since they've actually had a chance to be heels. And, and just a pure heel, right? Like... It's almost like the acclaimed everybody wants to make them heal, but realistically, if uh, you got two guys that are so good at being it. Oh, here comes the spot. Here comes Dax. Nope. Oh, God. Dax went hard in that post. Right up and over the top. Okay, there we go. Let's go, Bones. Sent down. Knee to the face. I thought Nigel would be very familiar with just a couple inches being enough. But of course, Shivani doesn't want to say that because he's the good guy and he doesn't want it to throw out that kind of stuff. Uh oh. Da -da 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 That's three. Now he's made a tag. Nice try, Shivani. E for effort, but... I 
Nice pull-out move there. Yes, I know that's, you know. And Caster gets rocked. That's hilarious. Looks like something I would be stupid enough to do. We all love a good pull-out move. It's like, yeah, we can't figure out who's the legal man, so we'll just go with this right now. Well, the backdrop didn't work. The flying nothing didn't work. I think the whole foursome isn't gelling well together, but. Yeah, let's be not outside of the you lying son of a biscuit. Uh oh. Just the two cat once again. You lying sons of guns, you got Canada. Outside of North America. Shivani, get it straight. Yeah, this this match just You know about the stakes of the match. This just and you know you can expect more from these guys. It just it doesn't feel good like as they're going on here. Maybe things will smooth it out, but it's like I said off top of the show. I expect this to be a little rough today. <laughs> it was definitely not we're not the official unofficial state. And I'm saying that as a person from Alberta, which you take three quarters of the population, it's almost a you wish kind of thing. But yeah, it almost feel, it feels weird how things are going through here. Like they're hitting their spots like. It, it just doesn't feel like it gels that well or makes a lot of sense on a lot of ways. Oh, God. This is where you're supposed to have your partner come in to break it up. How dare you mention the word Steiner here on AEW? Because next thing you know, you'll have to mention Breaker. I want to see which promotion does the first FUBAR and screws up and mentions the other, directly mentions the other pro program. Not intentionally. At least don't make it look intentional. Like trying to get the, uh, not trying to get the cheap heat spot, just, Shocked it shocked he actually pulled that off. Caster just yeah, don't start chopping against Dax. Nice hot shot there. Making sure he grabs the tag rope to make it legal. They're trying to follow the rules, but. Yeah, it almost feels like, like, like we were talking about, like we were talking about before.
it just doesn't feel like the crowd's into it as much as they should be, right? I'm hoping things fire up in the next five minutes here because according to my clock, we got 12 minutes left on the clock for this. And also, it's also a, a fact that you do it face versus face, right? I think that's why FTR stri tried to do a little bit more heel work there early in the match, just because when the fans don't know who to cheer for, they might not just cheer, period. FTR, FTR. And early in the match, they were cheering for the Acclaim, so. Could you imagine the Bucks come out here and wreck everything? Reverse the sleeper right into the backdrop driver. That's textbook right there. But yeah, it just seems like everything's being taken a little slower pace. And I think that might be the lack of adrenaline here. With this small crowd, the way it's going. Missed, missed. And the DDT spot. I love it. I am such a fan of that spot. Classic, cl classic Arn Anderson with that move. But yeah, we're... Okay, so they're not mentioning anything about a special start time for next week. So, looks like everything will be normal for next week. And then the week after, the PLEs in the afternoon with WWE. So, we should have no problem with the same time collision. Not usually a Red Bull guy this late at night, but it's been a long day. That's a Claudio uppercut if I ever seen one right there. Very nice Corey special. But it really makes. No, I want them to fight for nine more minutes. Shout out to Tony. Get the video game reference in there. Atta boy. I've been waiting for so long for these guys to actually recognize that and throw it in there. Even though the game, well, let's just face it, it's about as suspect as. You know, some of the wrestlers that we've had on here the last few weeks in terms of jobber positions. Huh? Enhancement positions. Sorry, Dustin. Once again, shot to the throat. Power bomb, jackknife cover, reverse. I just want one of these guys to forget to kick out. When they've been slowing down to more of a WWE style, they look, well, I, I think they, you have to decide what pace you're going to go at. And that's probably the biggest thing they've been going at right now is the fact that AEW typically has that faster pace, right? 
So why did you grab the illegal man to do the pile driver on? How would he not know he's on top? He's staying right in front of him. Nice spear. Yeah, here you go. Now you get your little heartbeats and things starting to pick up a little bit. You got your new double down. Things should start picking up now at this point. But let's face it, it's, if, uh, like, the Acclaim never got a chance to go to Wembley, did they? Because the only tag was, uh, or no, they got to take on the Swerve, no, Swerve, Swerve was with, J oh no, uh, it was, uh, at All Out when they had, uh, had the acclaim there. That's when they got that shot where they're supposed to get the shot titles or whatever. I love Billy. He's like, don't you dare tap. Kataro Crusher. Of course, it's going to be a famous here because Billy Gunn's the manager. We're getting to that showtime point. There's five minutes left in the match. I'd assume they're not getting an overrun tonight. I love how the guys in the front row are on their feet, but they're hunched over like this. It's like, yeah, we're at our feet, but. <laughs> the crowd's basically just doing a great thank you for being here to Arlington. Just because it's AEW's last time in Arlington, probably for another. Well, probably till Christmas, I would think. They usually do uh, like winter is coming or something like that down here. Even though it's in the middle of the heat. Oh, God. Please don't. Please don't. Well, I guess what we're getting. Anybody here of a Broadway? We're going to get a Broadway, aren't we? Oh, let's have another three-way. So we're going to get a three-way and a four-way. Oh, God. Dax slipped. Shout out to both these guys for being professional enough for catching that. Damn. All right, let me throw a snooze on here because we're getting close to finish time here. Wonder if Bowen's legit hurt his knee. Oh, 
Well, and Paul Turner's going to all four quarters, so they might be calling an audible here. Before Dak slipped, Tony said, who's going to slip up? Yeah, it's true. Or are they going to do the artificial th Oh, God. Really? Dax got out the last second. <laughs> and the bowling pin. The bowling pin breakup. Yeah, we're we got about two minutes left. I'll take a half hour draw, I guess. Which means both of them are gonna Once again we're gonna get a we're gonna get a twelve man tag, a nine man tag. Or sorry, six, a 12 and a six. For those that popped in here late, uh, the trios titles are going to be determined in a four-way ladder match. Which is going to be an absolute cluster no matter what. Makes you wonder how they're going to actually do it, where the camera's going to be able to see everybody. Ring the bell on two. And Daddy has Lily throwing Caster into the ring. That is hilarious. And the whole crowd's like, boo. This isn't MJF. We know we're not going to finish with two seconds to spare. But you son of a... Hey, Dodger. Oh, thank you for your, uh, about Fortnite there. Yeah, it's, it's a little, uh, guilty pleasure I got when I get a chance to play, right? So, yeah, we're just finishing up with AEW Collision here right now. Our main event's on right now, and we got less than a minute left in our main event, apparently. And there we go. Any Fortnite tonight? No, we're WWE 2K24. We got our uh, My GM mode coming up after the break. We're going to do five more minutes, or are we going to do... So the Bucks say no winners. <laughs> so Dax decides to punch Billy. That is probably the dumbest move you could do. All right, well, we sort of expected this. If they were smart, they would put Daniels on the screen up top to let us know about that.
So we're gonna get a three-way for the for the tag titles, a 12-way for the trios. Makes me wonder what our two teams are gonna be for the uh, qualifier now. Cause I almost think uh, the acclaimed and daddy ass would be the other trio. As we fade to black. All right. As that wrapped up there, I I'm going to be frank with you guys, or I'll be Mike with you guys, sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but, like, don't get me wrong, the wrestling was okay tonight. It just, it didn't have the same vibe as a usual collision. Uh, early part, uh, Britt Baker uh, taking out Harley Cameron, that, that had a good pop to it to begin, but it was only 10 minutes, and then... They did the Mercedes spot with Camille, and basically they got that whole thing over. Uh, you had the Claudio match with Leo was okay. It almost felt like it almost felt like a filler match just to fill in a spot right there, which realistically it was because it wasn't on the card. Uh, you had the tag match. You had the two jobber matches. And then you had the uh, ROH Tag Championships, which basically you got the uh, the big discount for uh, the uh, for the Texas boys with the title at home. So, like I said, all in all, I don't expect much out of Collision going into Webley period, but we got that one big match plan for the uh, for the trios uh, title there, the wild card match that goes on. The problem with AEW's pay per views is they set their matches far enough in advance that the TV shows leading up to file few feel like fluff. Yeah, I would give you that. Yeah, Dodge or 11 more days. Actually, I think it's eight, isn't it? Or sorry, six. They usually do them on Fridays. And we'll see how things go. I don't know how much I'll play of it, to be perfectly honest, Dodger. We're having so much fun with all the other stuff we're doing here. We'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. It's not turning my crank. I'll find something else that does because there's something out. There's a lot of stuff out there. So, But yeah, Zodiac, I'm with you. Like, it's almost like they hit all their bullet points already. So this, is just, this was a get on the airplane collision. Let's just call it spade a spade here. Let me just snooze this real quick here before... We get caught on a bur on an ad here. Tonight's collision was basically a get on the airplane uh, collision. The only thing of real consequence there, the ROH title could have been uh, tag tiles could have been defended on the ROH show, which I know that's another bone of contention all over the place there. But I think, I think with this title change, we might have fixed that up a little bit here. But the fact that Dustin and Sammy are probably going to be a little more. Uh, exclusive to uh the roh brand from now for now at the pretty much at this time and then uh the undisputed kingdom can focus more on being on the main roster kind of thing and uh the only other thing that was a consequence was a time limit draw which i think everybody pretty much assumed that's what was going to happen anyway to begin with so did I waste two hours? No, it's still good. It's still good wrestling. AEW still has good wrestling. I, it wasn't to the standard what we no, normally expect on the acclaimed and FTR. The rest of the card was about as good as we expect normally. It, it was some decent wrestling. Hologram had a great match with Angelico. Another setup match to make him look great as always. But other than that, it's just like, all right, guys, let's get to Wembley and let's get the show on the road here. So things can look a little more exciting. I, I'm I'm really looking forward to Wednesday, but this show isn't the one that's going to make people tune in to Wednesday. They got to be ready for the pay-per-view in order to watch Wednesday and understand the situations behind it. I think that's the best way to sub that up. Mm -hmm.